This video is going to give a very thorough explanation of how to use commutators and conjugates. For those of you who never heard of commutators and conjugates, they basically allow you to create your own algorithms from scratch and can be used to do literally anything you want them to do on any size Rubik's Cube. Commutators and conjugates cannot directly solve parity errors on larger cubes, but with a bit of fooling around they can indirectly solve parity, which you will see later. In this video, I'll show how to perform commutators and conjugates, show some problems they solve, and show some unique patterns that you can make with commutators and conjugates. There are three fundamental types of commutators. There are three cycles, orientation swaps, and pair swaps. Three cycles are the easiest to understand, as well as by far the most common and most useful type of commutator. Because of this, I'm going to almost exclusively cover three cycles in this video, although I will introduce the other two types to show how they work. All types of commutators are always of the form x, y, x prime, y prime where x is some algorithm, y is some algorithm, and x prime and y prime are the inverses of x and y, respectively. The inverse of an algorithm is whatever algorithm is needed in order to undo whatever was just done. To find the inverse of an algorithm, write the algorithm backwards and then write a prime symbol after every element. For example, if we have the algorithm x equals r prime t f2, then the inverse would be x prime equals f2 t prime r. Notice that f2 prime equals f2 and that r double prime equals r. I'm about ready to show an example of a three cycle, but before I do, I must list some conditions for three cycles to be possible. Of the three pieces of interest used in the commutator, exactly two pieces must be in the same layer and exactly one piece must be in a different layer than the other two pieces. The two pieces that are placed in the same layer are usually placed in the bottom layer for simplicity and convention, although they could be in any layer. This will all make sense when you see the following example. Okay, this is going to be a simple example of a three cycle using corners. We're going to cycle this piece with this piece with this piece. Now remember that we need to satisfy the condition that we need two pieces in the bottom layer and one piece not in the bottom layer. By holding the cube like this, we Considering the yellow as the bottom, we have satisfied that condition because we have these two pieces here in the bottom layer and we have this piece here in the top layer. So we're ready to perform the commutator. Now recall that a commutator has the form x, y, x prime, y prime. So first up is x. What is x? x is whatever algorithm is needed to put the piece that which is not in the bottom layer, so this piece, correctly into the bottom layer while affecting nothing else in the bottom layer except that slot. Now this may sound kind of confusing, but after I show it to you, it shouldn't be that confusing anymore. So I'll go ahead and perform algorithm X. Now notice that this piece is now solved in the bottom layer, and this is the only piece that was affected in the bottom layer. Turns out the top can get it scrambled as it can, the top can get extremely scrambled and the computator will still work. Now, to perform algorithm Y. Algorithm Y is whatever algorithm is needed in order to put the other piece in the bottom layer, so this piece, to the slot that you just solved. Algorithm Y is usually really easy to see and is only ever one move. So we'll go ahead and do algorithm Y. See, we just moved this piece from right there to there to the, solve, to the piece that you just solved. Now remember, commutator again is x, y, x prime, y prime. But once you define x and y, that means x prime and y prime are already defined also. They're just the inverses of x and y. So up next is x prime, which I'll perform now. Finally, y prime. You'll notice this solved the cube. This is a simple example of a three cycle. OK. Here's going to be another example of a three cycle, except this time we're going to be using the edges instead of the corners. Uh, we're going to be swapping this piece with this piece with this piece. Now again, remember we need to satisfy the condition that we need two pieces in the same layer, and or two pieces in the bottom layer, and one not in the bottom layer. So we have satisfied that condition again with the yellow on the bottom, these two pieces, are in the bottom layer, and then this piece is not in the bottom layer. And remember, algorithm X is to get whatever piece is not in the bottom layer, so this piece, 
into the bottom layer. In this case, algorithm X is this. See this successfully put this green and yellow piece into the bottom layer in the correct slot and affected nothing else in the bottom layer. Now algorithm Y is just to move this piece, the other piece in the bottom layer, to the slot that you just solved, which I just did. Now again, X and Y have been performed, so now that all that's left is X prime and Y prime. So I'll perform X prime, and finally Y prime. And now the cube is solved. This is another example of a free cycle. Okay, I'll now show you the next type of commutator, which is an orientation commutator. Um, it swaps the orientation of exactly two pieces. In this case, we're going to swap the orientation of two corners. Uh, orientation is the direction each piece is facing, and permutation is the way it faces. So, as you see, um, this piece, well, both these pieces, are in the correct location, but they're just um, facing the wrong way, which means they have correct permutation and uh, incorrect orientation and this type of commutator only switches orientation and does nothing to permutation. Um, the, condition, the condition that we need for this type of commutator is that we need both pieces <clears throat> to be in the bottom layer, uh, which we have satisfied here if the yellow is bottom. <clears throat> now, um, unlike the other type of commutator, we don't have anything in the top layer to put down in here. so. What we need to do is get this piece out of the bottom layer and eventually put it back in with the correct orientation. And it, it takes a little longer, but and then uh, obviously again, this is the only piece that we're allowed, or this is the only slot that we're allowed to alter in the bottom layer. So I'll go ahead and perform algorithm X, which is just gonna basically rotate this piece and do nothing else to the bottom of the layer. See, um, now this piece is correctly oriented. Now algorithm Y is the same. Um, it's just whatever algorithm is needed in order to put the piece, the other piece in the bottom layer to the piece, to the slot that you just solved. So like that. Now we did algorithm X and Y, so we just need to undo X, which, whoops. And finally, undo Y. So this was an orientation commutator. Okay, this next commutator is going to be another orientation commutator, except we're going to use the edges instead of the corners. Um, pretty easy to see. We need to swap the orientation of this piece and this piece. Um, easier said than done. This is actually a pretty long commutator. Um, so again, algorithm X is we need to put we need to swap the orientation of this piece without affecting anything else in the bottom layer. So this algorithm is a bit tricky, but I'll show you uh, what to do. I'll hit the cube like this so you can see it a little better. See that put that piece correctly oriented in the bottom layer? Now just algorithm Y, just swap this unsolved piece to this slot you just solved, and then you just undo, you do undo X, so X prime, and finally Y prime. This was another orientation commutator. Although orientation commutators are useful, no, they have some major disadvantages. First, they're long. They're about twice as long as the average three cycle. Second, they accomplish very little for being so long. Think about it. A normal three cycle solves three pieces in about eight moves. The average orientation swap solves two pieces in about 16 moves. Third, they have limited use. As opposed to a three cycle which can simultaneously solve orientation and permutation, Orientation swaps can only solve orientation and cannot touch permutation. Fourth, they can normally be avoided if three cycles are done properly. 
However, it is easy to mess up the orientation of three cycles if you're not careful, as I will demonstrate later in this video. Because of these reasons, I will not spend any more time on this video discussing orientation swaps. Okay, now I'm going to discuss the final type of commutator, which is a pair swap. Uh, pair swaps swap two pieces, like two pairs of two pieces. So for example, here's the whole cube that you can see. So we're going to swap this piece with this piece, and we're going to swap this piece with this piece, all in one commutator. So um, the condition for um, pair swaps is that you need all four pieces to be in the bottom layer. So algorithm X, first we need to swap these two pieces, this one and this one. So I'll move the cube like this so it's a little easier to see what I'm doing. Uh, so I'll perform algorithm X. See that swapped uh, these two pieces without affecting other, any other two slots in the bottom layer. Uh, next, algorithm Y. Again, same thing as it's always been. We just need to uh, replace these two pieces with the pieces that have just been solved. And now we've done X and Y, so we just need to uh, undo it. So we'll do X prime. And finally, Y prime. This was a pair swap commutator. Okay, now I'm going to show another uh, pair swap commutator. Um, I'm going to show it with edges again, just a different configuration. Uh, I'm not going to show the um, the corner pair swap commutator just because it's extremely long. So here we need to swap um, these two pieces and these two pieces. So algorithm X is a little tricky this time. Again, it's probably even trickier than last time. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. Remember, we need to swap this piece and this piece without affecting anything else in the bottom layer. We need to do that all in algorithm X. So here we go. See, now these two pieces are solved in the bottom layer. Now, again, Y is the same as every other time. Just replace the slots that were just filled. There we go. Now we just need to undo X. We need to perform X prime. So I'll go ahead and do that. And finally, undo Y. And this is another example of a pair swap commutator. Pair swaps accomplish a lot by solving four pieces, but still have several disadvantages. First, they have extremely limited use. There are only a few cases where this type of commutator can actually be used without being overly complicated. Second, most of the time, even in this past example I've shown, it is often easier to just perform two three cycles. The first three cycle will solve one of the four pieces, and then the second three cycle will solve the three remaining pieces. Because of these reasons, I will not spend any more time on this video discussing pair swaps. I will now focus entirely on three cycles. All right, now let's consider this example again. It's um, it's pretty similar to the very first one I showed, the very first commutator. It's uh, another three cycle. Um, I'll perform it, and you'll see what's interesting about this one. Okay, so... Uh, we need to satisfy the conditions two in the bottom layer, so these two are in the bottom layer, and one not in the bottom layer, which we have. Um, algorithm X is we put the piece in the top layer correctly into the bottom layer, so I'll go ahead and do that. So far, so good. Uh, now, algorithm Y, we need to replace this piece by this piece, so do that. 
So we did x and y, and now do we just need to do x inverse and y inverse? And y inverse. Um, this didn't solve the cube. <clears throat> as you know, as you'll notice here, um, everything has correct permutation, but we messed up uh, orientation somehow. This is what I was referring to earlier, that um, orientation swaps can normally be avoided unless um, three cycles are done carelessly, which I purposely did here to prove a point. And now I'm going to have to introduce um, conjugates because we cannot do this particular commutator without a conjugate. A conjugate is needed whenever a commutator cannot be performed in the cube's current state. Certain conjugates do specific tasks, but the general definition of a conjugate is that it is whatever algorithm is needed in order to be able to do a commutator. We denote the conjugate as z. After the commutator is performed, we then need to undo the conjugate. So the form of a commutator with a conjugate is always of the form z, x, y, x prime, y prime, z prime. Now let's consider the same example again, except use a conjugate along with the commutator. Okay, now we're going to do this same example again, except uh, we're going to have to use a conjugate with the commutator this time. Now, um, remember, a conjugate is whatever algorithm is needed in order to be able to do a commutator. And um, in this case, as again we've said, if we just put this piece right into the bottom layer immediately, then that's incorrect because as I've shown, then that causes an orientation error. So, in order to be able to do a conjugate, you kind of need to look ahead a couple pieces. So, we're going to eventually, we know that eventually we're going to put this yellow piece right here, which means that eventually we're going to rotate this piece over to here. So eventually this yellow piece is going to repl be replaced by this red piece. But that's no good because when we put the red piece back then, we're going to have the red piece here on this blue face. But we don't want a red piece on the blue face. We want a blue piece on the blue, on the blue face. So how we fix that would we do this. And this is the conjugate in this case. Now when we put this piece correctly into the bottom layer, we'll have yellow, and then when we rotate this around the bottom face 180 degrees, it will be replaced by blue, which is what we need it to be replaced by. So now if we perform the commutator, you'll see that this does uh, work. So we'll go ahead and perform algorithm X. Now perform algorithm Y. Now x inverse, now y inverse, and remember, since we did a conjugate, we just need to undo the conjugate at the end of the commutator. And this was an example of a simple conjugate. Okay, this is going to be another example of a um, commutator where we need to use a conjugate. Now, as you notice, we need to swap three edge pieces but um, they're all in the bottom layer, so we need to get one out of the bottom layer so that we satisfy the condition that two are in the same layer and one is not in that layer. So the, um, the conjugate in this case is going to be this piece up here. Now we have two pieces here uh, and one piece here. You'll see in a little bit why I chose this particular piece instead of the other two pieces. Um, so let's go ahead and perform the commutator now. So we need this piece to go into that slot. So we have to do that. Now algorithm y, we just move this over there. Now x prime. Now y prime. And finally uh, z prime, undo the conjugate. And this is a simple example Another simple example of a conjugate except with edges. Now I'll show another one uh, with edges again. Okay, now this is going to be literally the exact same example again, except we're going to do a different um, conjugate than before. Last time the conjugate was this. Now we're going to make it uh, something else. Um, now, you could make the conjugate this, 
um, to put this red piece, red and yellow piece, into this layer. And eventually, you'd need to put the red, I mean, the yellow sticker from this piece to right here, which we kind of run into the same problem as the example I showed a little earlier with the conjugates used in the uh, corner pieces, where if you look, if you put this yellow piece down here, this yellow is eventually going to be replaced by blue. And when we put blue back here, that's no good because that would mean there would be a blue here and a yellow there when we need the exact opposite. So this conjugate won't work. However, we can slightly modify it so that it will work. Whoops, let me undo that. Okay, um, so the first thing we need to do is get this yellow piece, this yellow sticker to the bottom layer before we do anything else. Job done then. And now you can make this the conjugate also. So there were, this conjugate is a kind of long one, it's three moves, but it doesn't really matter how long a conjugate is, it, it will still work. So now we'll go ahead and perform algorithm X. Algorithm Y. X inverse. Y inverse. And finally, undo the conjugate. This was another example of a, uh, a different type of conjugate you could use for the exact same configuration. All right, one more time, same example. Uh, you're probably getting sick of this by now, but there's actually a way to perform this uh, commutator without using any conjugate at all. Now, until now, I've shown you only commutators that use the bottom layer as kind of like the so-called like buffer layer where you have two pieces in them but as I've said before you can use any layer so we can position this cube like this or we consider the orange as the bottom instead of the yellow and we'll make the middle layer as like the layer that we have the two pieces in and then the top layer is the layer we have one piece in no. Um, by doing that, we just need to perform algorithm X by putting this piece into this slot. Then perform algorithm Y by moving this piece over to there. Now X inverse. And Y inverse. I showed these last few examples um, with this exact same uh, configuration to show that there's no unique way to do a commutator conjugate pair um you know it just depends sometimes there's quicker ways to do it than others and uh, you just need to kind of look around to see which is the quickest way all right now i'm going to show an, a little bit more interesting example um, this is just a random configuration that i happened to get um by starting to solve the cube and i just got this far and i ended up with this configuration um you can practice getting um, like random configurations like this with uh, corners by just doing the Friedrich method solving you know the bottom two layers and then solve when you're doing OLL only worry about the orientation of the edges and then when you're doing PLL also only worry about the orientation of the edges and then the remaining corners the remaining four corners are just randomly scrambled and you can use commutators to solve the remaining corners now let's look at these corners here all of them have incorrect uh, permutation except for this one which has correct orientation uh, I mean correct permutation but incorrect orientation now what we could do is we could solve these three pieces so that there's only one without orientation and then do an orientation uh, swap to solve the remaining two um, but I think there's a much better way to do it the way I've always done it, and that is to do um, two three cycles instead of doing a uh, three cycle and then an orientation swap because I like to avoid orientation swaps just because they're very long. So first thing that we need to do is look, we, we just basically want to solve one piece. So let's try to solve, um, I can see we can solve this piece. We can put this orange there. 
um, and then we want we want to include the incorrectly oriented piece in the in the first three cycle. Um, by doing so, you'll move it somewhere. It doesn't matter where. It just matters that you move it out of its location. By doing that, you'll you won't have to deal with a um, orientation swap. You can just do two, three cycles. Um, if again, if we did an, a uh, conjugate or a commutator involving only these three pieces um, and ignore the piece with the uh, incorrect orientation, then we'd solve either one or two of them, but we'd still have at least one other piece besides this one that has incorrect orientation and you need to do an orientation swap. So I'll show you how to uh, avoid that. So we'll go ahead and perform this uh, commutator. There's x, y, x inverse, y inverse. Now you'll notice um, all of these pieces now have incorrect permutation, which is good. Now we can just perform a regular um, three cycle and be done with it. Uh, in fact, looks like this one doesn't even need a uh, conjugate. We can just simply do this. So that's how to solve um, four pieces out of place when one of them has incorrect orientation. Okay, now we're going to start with uh, commutators uh, in larger cubes. Here's a pretty simple example. We just need to swap this with this with this piece. So just to first perform algorithm X, we use this layer as our buffer zone. So we need uh, two pieces in this layer and one piece not in this layer. So we'll go ahead and put this piece up, move it over, put it back down. Uh, algorithm Y. Then just undo X and undo Y. So a pretty simple example of a large cube commutator. Okay, here's a bit more interesting example um, of a large cube commutator. We uh, can't use the bottom layer of this uh, without using a conjugate at least because these two pieces are not superimposable on each other. In other words, if you keep an eye on this piece when you rotate this slot over, it's over here. It's not in this slot, which is what we need it to be. So um, instead, of using the bottom layer as our uh, layer with two pieces in it. We'll just use this layer as a layer with two pieces in it because we already have two here. And then we'll just use the top as the uh, layer with one piece in it. So first we need to put this piece here. So it's pretty easy to see algorithm X. Now algorithm Y, we just need to replace this piece over here. Now undo, whoops. Now undo x and undo y. This is another large cube uh, commutator. All right, so here's gonna be an example of something uh, that a lot of people consider parity when uh, there's two pieces to switch uh, and there's nothing like nothing else scrambled on the cube. This is actually not um, a form of parity because it, it appears as if we need to make only one like Switch, switch this piece with this one and switch this piece with this one and there's nothing to like three cycle because with a three cycle we need to cycle three pieces we don't just need to swap two but actually here we can cycle three pieces we can cycle this piece to here and then this piece to there and then this piece to there so first thing that I'm gonna do is move this piece back to the back layer which now it's kind of hard to see what's going on because you can't actually see it, but I'll rotate the cube around to show you where it's at. So that piece is there in the back of the cube. So when I rotate this over and put it back down, it appears as if I did nothing to the bottom layer, but I switched these two yellow pieces, this one and that one. So now we need to perform algorithm Y, which is we just need to replace this yellow piece, I mean this red piece with this yellow piece, so like that. 
And now we just perform uh, X inverse and Y inverse. So this was a center um, commutator. All right, this is going to be another example, very similar to the last one, except we have more pieces to solve here. Now we could do two individual commutators here, two individual three cycles, but um, it's not necessary because commutators have the ability to affect more than one piece at a time. So we can do pair three cycles. We can swap these two pieces with these two pieces with these two pieces. Whoop. So um, the first thing that we need to do is uh, swap these two with these two, which is algorithm X. It's very similar to the last algorithm. So I'll put this piece up, swap it around, and put it back. Now again, it appears as if I've done nothing to the bottom layer, but actually I've swapped it up here. So now we just perform algorithm Y. Now X inverse, and Y inverse. So this is an example of a pair three cycle, which I'll be focusing on now for a while. All right, now we're really getting into some neat stuff. All you guys know this as uh, parity, which is normally solved with an extremely long algorithm. Um, but I'm going to show you how to solve parity using commutators instead. Now, we can't directly solve parity using commutators because of the limitations of the cube. However, according to a branch of mathematics called group theory, um, this has odd parity right now, but you can change the parity from odd to even by doing a single turn of an inner layer like this. And now from here we can do uh, commutators and conjugates to solve the cube. So we'll start with uh, the uh, centers. The uh, last uh, center uh, commutators that we did, we'll swap this one with this one and this one. So I'll go ahead and do that commutator. This is algorithm X. Algorithm Y. Now X inverse. And Y inverse. Uh, there's one center solve. We have three remaining, and we can solve the remaining three with one three cycle. However, this requires a, um, a conjugate. We need to get both of these pairs into the bottom layer. So we can do that by rotating this over and putting this down. Now we have both of these pieces in the bottom layer and this, uh, I mean both of these pairs of pieces in the bottom layer and then this other one right here. So this piece belongs there. We'll perform algorithm X, algorithm Y, X inverse, Y inverse, and now the uh, Z inverse, the inverse of the conjugate. And now we're left with only edges, and there are five remaining. Um, so we see that we want to put this piece here, and we want to put this piece over here, which means that we can put this piece over here. So we'll do a three cycle with these three pieces. One, two, three. Uh, we can use this layer here as the buffer uh, layer with two pieces in it and we'll put, we use this conjugate to get this other piece up in the uh, top layer out of these other two layers. Otherwise they would all be in the same layer which we can't do. So we'll put this piece up there. Now we'll perform algorithm X to put this piece into that slot. Whoops. Wait a minute. Ah, sorry. We want to put this piece into that slot. Not there. So go ahead and do that. Now move this piece over as algorithm Y. And now X inverse, Y inverse, and finally inverse of the conjugate. 
Now we only have three pieces um, remaining. Um, we need to swap this one there, this piece there, and then this piece over there. Uh, there's a couple, there's a ton of ways to do conjugates uh, to do this commutator. I'm just going to pick this one. Now we have these two pieces in this layer and the other piece up here. So again, perform algorithm X. Algorithm Y. Now X inverse. Y inverse. And finally, the conjugate inverse. And uh, this is how to solve parity using only commutators and a knowledge of group theory. All right, this is a kind of interesting example of a pair three cycle, and we're gonna swap a pair of uh, a center and an edge at the same time. So we're gonna swap these two with these two with these two. Now, we need to keep these two in the bottom two layers. We can't just consider it as one layer. So the bottom two layers, and then this one is in the top layer. So this one doesn't require a um, conjugate because we can immediately put this piece into this slot or these pieces into these into this slot. So I'll go ahead and do that, which is algorithm X. Now when we perform Y, we can't simply rotate the bottom layer because then we're ignoring this other white piece over there. So we need to rotate both of the bottom layers. So that was algorithm Y. Now we just undo X. And undo Y. So this is an interesting example of a pair three cycle. All right, this is gonna be the last um, commutator I show in this video. This particular commutator um, and conjugate pretty much sums up and shows and puts to use every single concept that I um, told you about in this video. So let's get started. We're gonna swap. Now, it looks like you just need to rotate this. It doesn't even look like there's anything to swap. But actually, whoops. But actually, there is. We can consider these two pieces as a pair these two pieces as a pair and these two pieces as a pair and perform a three cycle in them. However, the, the conjugate is quite interesting because you can't rotate this like any way without, without um, breaking one of the three pairs. So you're going to need to break it and then just reassemble it again. So let's consider the uh, blue face. Well, we'll rotate it this way. We'll consider the white face to be the bottom because it doesn't really matter. And white's easiest to look at. So we'll consider, the, we'll consider these two pieces as a, uh, as a pair. Now... We need to get these two pieces into the same layer as this one. So we'll keep it in the in the bottom layer. So we need to get these two pieces in the same layer as this one. Now in order to do that, it's kind of weird looking, but I'll show you how to do it. Now, notice this pair is still intact, and this pair is still intact. And then the other pair is right here. Now, so far so good, but the commutator isn't, I mean, the conjugate isn't finished yet because we still have this pair and part of it is in the bottom layer, which the first rule of a commutator is that you can't have three piece, three types of pieces from the, that you're using in the same layer. So we still need to get this piece out. So to, to get it out, we can do this. <clears throat> so now 
now we're good. Now we're finished with the, with the uh, conjugate. So we have um, this pair, this pair, and this pair. Now, something that seems a lot of people have trouble with when first doing really weird commutators is that they have trouble just focusing on these three pieces when the rest of the cube looks kind of scrambled itself. But you just kind of have to ignore it. So now it's time to perform algorithm X. So we need to put these two pieces into these two slots. So I'll go ahead and do that. See? Now these two pieces are solved. Now we need to perform algorithm Y, which is this. And this is what I love about commutators. This cube looks extremely scrambled right now. But since we've already defined z, x, and y, we already know what to do for the rest of the commutator. So we'll perform x inverse. y inverse. Oops, not that. There we go. And z inverse. Now this was a pretty tricky commutator. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. This is the end of the video. Check out the uh, video description to see uh, probably most of the questions you have about it. Thanks for watching.